We're back to talk the biggest bombs of 2019. If you're like, what are the biggest bombs of 2019? Well, we're ready to go, aren't we? We've already done the biggest hits. Mm -hmm. Click on that video if you want. It's below and at the end of this. Now the biggest mitts. Now the biggest mitts. Oh, last but first, before we get, are you okay? No, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> what are you listening at the end of the last video? We're, we're immediately recording from the previous, <laughs> uh, the previous video, so things have not changed. Absolutely, they have not. Now, the numbers on a lot of these have been fudged because studios don't like to come out and be like, hey, we lost this much money necessarily. So let's assume that whatever figure they say, twice as much. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's some I'm not going to talk about. Do you want me to talk about Poms? Do you want me to talk about Ugly Dolls? I don't know what e either of those exactly. are. Exactly. No. So let's start at number 10. And look, it's only recently hit cinemas, but it's doing very poorly. On a $95 million budget, it made $12 million in its first oh, weekend. Oh, I already know what this is. Yeah, it's Cats. It's Cats, yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I wonder whether they didn't make a horrifying cat nightmare of a film mm -hmm. with yeah. human hybrid cat people. Mm -hmm. I wonder, and if it was based off a better, more sensical musical that wasn't made in a coke fever dream, I wonder uh -huh. if this perhaps would have done better. Look, there's no, there's just no way of knowing. Yeah. Neither of us have seen this yet. No. But we have seen, seen it in our nightmares, basically. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We've, we've seen the trailers and that's seeped into every other I'm aspect of the I'm not okay, life. Mason, and people, this isn't helping. People who are who have seen it have have reported just just visceral reactions to it. Just yes. feeling physically sick <laughs> and scared in the cinema. Nothing that has been revealed to me about this movie has filled me with confidence or anything other than dread. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to seeing it. There's unfinished CGI, yep. it's nonsensical, yep. it goes nowhere, and it's going to be patched, apparently. Yes. That, uh, the, the first time I've ever heard about this, they're sending and they're finishing it and sending it a new version to like cinemas. Like a video game DLC. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Exactly. So, just incredible. My favourite thing, or one of my favourite things in cinema, is a massive swing and a miss like yeah. this. Yeah. Just like, at every step of the way, none of this works. And they kept going. <laughs> they kept now, doing it. Now, uh, one of your editors, Matt, yes. suggested on Twitter that this might be a The Producers style situation, <laughs> where they've deliberately done this yes. in order to, uh, to make a flop, and that somehow... Fixes their tax problems. After all, the Internal Revenue Service isn't interested in a show that flopped. Wake me if there's a fire. Amazing. But under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. It's entirely possible. <laughs> right? But at the same time, it's a, it's maybe one of the most successful yeah. stage musicals of all time, yeah. despite it making no sense. I think so maybe that's it. Maybe I that's what they were banking on. They're also banking on like The Greatest Showman. Not great reviews, doesn't do well at a gate, sticks around and does well yeah, over, right. the, over the, the holidays. And it, it's entirely possible. But on the other hand, maybe we finish recording this video and I go out to see it and it's already out of cinemas. Yes, so. that's entirely possible too. Who knows? Next up we have uh, The Kid Who Would Be King, which is a Joe Cornish movie. It's like a King Arthur kind of retelling in the modern day. Budget is $60 million, box office 32 I haven't seen it, but apparently it's very good. Famous people in it, I yes. believe. There's some names. There's some names. People are in it. Yeah. I want to see it, and I haven't, and I'm sorry. <laughs> But is this even your demographic? Would you see no, what is essentially not. a kid's film? You'd no. have to, see, that's the thing. We'd have to. It's not something that would be in our minds to see. Sick of, when I saw, like, oh, my God, it's another King Arthur, yeah. like an origin or whatever. And we've seen, we've, I mean, in the last few years, we've seen King Arthur. Transformers. Transformers, the one where there's a dragon in Robin it. Robin Hood was probably sort of that. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Just not the Phantom. I saw that when it came out. Just chuck that in the box, too. Is that what that was about? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Next up at number eight. Again, these are sort of in order. A Hellboy. Budget of 50 million. Lower for the Hellboy movies. Only made 41. I think it's better than it got credit for. I like the Hellboy, the Hellboy reboot slash remake, whatever this it's is. It's not great, especially the back end and it looks unfinished. Yeah, right. But and and some the of the editing thing, is a bit all over the place, yeah. but I think I think it has its charms. I enjoy just the Hellboy mythos and the mixing of of folklore and monsters. Agreed. And I think David Harbour does a great job as Hellboy. I think people are holding on too much to the Ron Perlman, Guillermo del Toro, mm -hmm. Hellboys. Look, they're, they're okay. You loved it. You want to kiss this one? Yeah, I do. I want to kiss it. I think it's fine. Better than I thought. Speaking of... Oh, no, this one's the worst. Uh, Dark <laughs> Phoenix. Budget oh, yeah. of 200 million somehow. Presumably because they reshot the ending because it was exactly like Captain Marvel. Yeah, to uh, make it less interesting. That's right. <laughs> for, for people who don't know, mm. the finale of Dark Phoenix was going to take place in outer space and then... Shooting spaceships. And then when you watched in the finished version in cinemas, it t takes place on yes. a train. Not in space, just no, to be clear. just to be clear, not a space train. And also, I guess if they didn't delay it, they would have got in first. And Captain Marvel would have been like, well, you've just done Dark Phoenix. Right. So they really cut a shot of Yeah, they the absolutely. Yeah, in all ways. Anyway, it only made $252 million at the box office. This was a handball to Disney. So this was actually oh, really? a Disney release. 
release because it's it a box. Do you think it's a poison pill of sorts? Yeah, like we'll, well give him a bad. We'll, we'll give him a bad for now. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that kind of was Fox and then moved to Disney did not do well. Yeah, right. I think almost exclusively. Oh. Anyway, Dark Phoenix is bad, and what a wet fart to the end of it. Oh, it's just very just a fizzler. Series. Yeah, there's some yeah. great X Men movies. I agree. This is not the worst. And that's the, the most I could say for it. Right. Yeah. Congratulations, Dark Phoenix. Next up, we have another comic book movie that I was really looking forward to, but I didn't end up seeing it. Apparently, it's not good. The Kitchen, on a budget of $38 million, uh, made $15 million in the box office. Is this based on an indie comic of some sort? I believe sort? it is. I think it uh, might be Vertigo, but I don't know for a fact. It's got Melissa McCarthy, Elizabeth Moss, Tiffany Haddish, Dom Mul Gleeson. Oh, it's, or a, it's Gleeson. a crime movie crime of some one. sort, right? Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. It's got common, surprise common appearance. Oh, I, know you love I love that. a surprise common appearance. Yeah, so there's some great names in it, but apparently it's so it's about these women kind of taking over all the mob stuff in their neighbourhood, and apparently it's just not very good. Okay, then. Yeah, so save that what you will. Well, well we have, haven't we? We have, yeah. Uh, next up, we have The Goldfinch on a budget of $45 million and made 3.6. It's about a cutie steals a painting or some shit. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Should have been the bloody goldfish. I'd bloody watch that. Me to, too. To the next movie, I'm really not surprised it didn't make money considering the ones that have come before and considering the budget. It's Terminator mm-hmm. Dark Fate. Yep. $185 million and made 261 off the back of... Nothing but average at best sequels. Yeah, I mean that's the this speaking of stuff that's been hamstrung, this yeah. This is a pretty solid movie. I think it's pretty good in parts. It's I mean it, as usual, it's nowhere near as good as one or two. Yeah. But it is better than some of the previous entries in the series. But unfortunately, audiences and fans have been burned too many times yeah. and I think they just stayed away from this because they're like, well What if Arnold was old? Yeah, we, we did that one. We yeah. did that one already. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I think it's got his best performance in it. I think uh-huh. Linda Hamilton is great. I like Grace in this, the new character by yeah. Mackenzie Davis. Uh, I like the new Terminator. I didn't like the kind of new John Connor that they brought in to be like, this is the new savior of humanity and whatever. Yeah, right. Uh huh. So, and there's, I know there were some problems like Tim Miller who directed it wanted to do certain things, and James Cameron was pushing for other things, and it just kind of went ended up somewhere in the middle. So it's not great. Yeah. But I also see why this made no money on its own in a vacuum. I think it probably should have been given a fairer shake but I completely understand why people stayed yes. away next up we have Gemini Man on a budget of 172 million it made 138 obviously all that went to the special effects and Will Smith being whatever he's and the weird super frame rate cameras yeah probably. oh my god atrocious movie I just <laughs> so a throwback in the worst way to like generic 90s espionage yeah, action look, I, I uh, muddled kind of action <laughs> sequences uh, look I like the performances blah. from Will Smith plus Will Smith and Mary Elizabeth Winstead I think they're good in this I think they're very charming but at the same time, it is it is very much like a throwback to the sixth day again, like a like a bad Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Yes. It's got that vibe from the mind of Ang Lee. What was he thinking? From the mind of Ang Lee, w- did he stop watching action movies in the nineties? Maybe that's it. I like a lot of his things. This one I mm. did not like at all. Next up, we've got, and it's a bit of a shame, but also not really a surprise. The sequel to The Shining, the movie version, Doctor mm. Sleep. Budget of 45, made 69 million at the box office. Nice. I haven't seen this yet. Apparently it's good. <laughs> That's what everybody's saying. I, apparently it's good, yeah. but I haven't seen it yet. Because he made Gerald's Game, which yeah. was on Netflix a couple of years ago, which is terrific. I think he's he did The Haunting of Hill House and this Oculus. Is, yeah, and of course this is a Stephen King property. Yes. And he's uh, Stephen King's had a good year for, mm. for, for movies just generally. Yeah. And his career generally. He's done he's okay. Doing great. He's done it's, mostly it's, very it's, well. It's interesting then that, the, and again, this is a sequel to... I guess what people might consider his most out there or artistic sure. adaptation. But Stephen sh- King also doesn't like The Shining. Yeah, right. He remade it himself But as maybe well. people out there don't like The Shining. Or maybe people out there are thinking, well, The Shining, the Stanley Kubrick mm. The Shining was a bit too artsy-fartsy for me. And we just saw Ready Player One where it was The <laughs> That's Shining. That's right, exactly. But maybe people are like, well, or maybe just people didn't know it was happening. Yeah. I mean, how much, how much promotion did you see for That's Dr. True. Sleep? Well, Number yeah, one. I guess it's also like, what is this? Because the, the the sequel is called Doctor Sleep, but most people wouldn't know that if yeah. they called it The Shining. I would have called it Reckoning ex- or something. Extra Shining. <laughs> extra Shiny. Also, I think this is a Tron Legacy situation. I think this is a Blade Runner twenty forty nine situation mm. where it's like it's remembered and loved. Yeah, and it's a good follow up, but there's not the general interest in it. To, yeah, absolutely right. Uh-huh. It. Yeah, uh, and of course at number one on a budget of forty million dollars and it only made thirteen point eight. <sighs> The Playmobil movie. <laughs> Do you know what this is? No. But so, I mean, those Lego movies go gangbusters, don't they? Well, that's they? it. And yeah. there is a bit of diminishing returns on the Lego movie movies. Right, uh-huh. And maybe it's a saturation. Be- or maybe it's the fact that if you, you get one on DVD, you could show it to your kid a thousand times. Well, that's the other and they, thing. And they never have to see another one. And not only that, there's also, there's a bunch of like Lego animated stuff, which isn't nearly the quality of 
Lego Ninja Lego. Go. Yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, there is a Ninjago movie, but I'm talking about stuff that, like, they've made a bunch of Star Wars Lego anime yeah, stuff. Yeah, of course, and right. Uh-huh. So maybe it's just a saturation point. So the Playmobil people thought, well, let's take the, the thing that's not as good as Lego and put $40 million <laughs> in it. We've made a career on the thing that's not that's quite right. as good as Lego. Let's jump into the cinema. I mean, it's got Anya Taylor-Joy. It's got Daniel Radcliffe. It's got Jim Gaffigan, Kenan Thompson. There's some big names in it, but just... No one wants this. What? It's what? Why? And what? And how? And don't do it. You did it. You shouldn't have done it. Right. And exactly. And you know what? As well, it's you know maybe it's a product that people remember playing with as a kid, but it doesn't cross over into adulthood. Like people still make amazing Lego stuff as adults. That's true. You know anybody who's got a room full of Playmobil? And if you, you do, call the police. Call the police. They've got a human head in their fridge. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, so those are the biggest bombs of the year as of so far. These numbers are of course subject to change. No Star Wars is not on here because it. I know people are like, well, it didn't do as well. Yeah, but it's still made a lot of money and will mm-hmm. continue to for a, right. the near future. But I'm interested, though, if people think there's any on this list that shouldn't be on there. Yeah. I know there's definitely a couple uh, for me because this isn't just all terrible films. There's some actually genuinely good stuff on what here. What do you think should have bombed this year? Let us know. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Dark Phoenix, obviously. But what else? <laughs> what else? Uh, anyways, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We recently did an episode on all our favourite and least favourite stuff from the year. It's our wrap-up episode. It's linked below. Um, you might want to check it out if you want something to kind of listen to while you're doing literally anything. Maybe you're on holidays. Maybe, Maybe you're out not. in the sunshine. Yeah. Maybe you're down a manhole. Maybe you're a human severed head in the fridge of a guy who likes Playmobil. And oh my God, are you bored in there? <laughs> I don't think there's something to listen to. Yeah. How about a podcast? How about a podcast? Mm-hmm, that's right. Anyways, uh, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I'm going to be taking a short break from YouTube over some of January. We'll be back in the new year at some point. By short, it might even be September. We'll find out, won't we? <laughs> oh, what? I don't know. All right, maybe I'll take over. <laughs> I'll do some of my own videos. How about that? Yes. <laughs> Just video of me in my car. Yeah. <laughs> Staring down. You know one of those what videos? What up, dogs? It's yeah. me, your boy, Nick Mason. That's right. Other ones. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, guys. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you in the new year. Goodbye. Good flexibility there on that tagline. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.